start. Okay, hey everybody, we're on. I'm so excited to see you tonight, um, or not see you. Well, I can't see you, see you, but I'm looking through my computer pretending I can see you. Um, <laughs> I am, I did change. I said I wasn't sure what I'd be wearing. I am wearing this really great top that I made with my friend. She has a version that says mock, and then mine says yeah, ing, yeah, bird, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember from Dumb and Dumber, we're big Dumb and Dumber friend, like obsessed. Um, so I changed and I'm really comfy because I'm gonna settle in and listen to Bertha and Claudia talk to us about um, what we're doing in upper level, um, upper, upper level digital classes basically. But um, I do think that there's gonna be something that we can all take away. Hola, Rebecca. Um, there's gonna be something that we can all take away for sure. I, as a middle school teacher, I'm equally as excited to um, hear them. Gracias, Paul. Love you. Adios. Your mom's phone is on. Okay, love you, bye. Love you, bye. Um, and so I'm really excited and eager for them to be with us. Um, Bertha and I met, it must have been at an IFLT. Was it at an IFLT? Yeah, yes. it was at IFLT. Um, and um, she has phenomenal energy, if you've ever met her. She, she like most um, native speakers, it was incredibly intimidating to me the first time I met her. Um, because anytime I get any sort of comment, um, from a native speaker, I'm like, but what do they really think? Um, because I'm not, I am very self-conscious about my Spanish. And so um, meeting her for the first time and feeling like she was genuinely excited um, to meet me and appreciated what I was doing and we became fast friends. And then she actually, um, we saw each other again at Sculpt and she came up to me and said, um, we, have to, we have to do something in Savannah, would you be willing? And I said, sure i'm on maternity leave so i'm wide open and she's like would you be willing like in two weeks willing can we like do this and i said okay so um she brought me out to savannah and that was awesome um and awesome to hang out with her and maribel and get to know them a little bit more and claudia i've actually this is like my first real introduction to claudia and so i know very little about her but they work as a team and they worked very hard to create this amazing presentation um and when I saw that she was doing it somewhere else, I said, oh, please, will you do that for the group? Um, and she said, let me ask Claudia, but I bet that sounds great. And so I'm very honored and excited that they've joined, they've joined me tonight. Um, what's going to happen is I'm going to switch over to them now and let them talk. And then when they're ready, I'm going to we're going to share slides and you'll still be able to see all of our faces at the same time. I'll tell you what, this is the best thing ever. OK, take it away, ladies. All right. Hi, everybody. I am so glad to be here. Thank you, Annabelle. I absolutely, absolutely love you. And I, you know, from the moment that I've met you, you just inspired me from all the workshops. When I brought you to, when we brought you to our school, you know, we just got all that energy from you. And I am so happy um, and honored that you have invited us to be here with you tonight. Uh, so several things about me. I've been teaching, uh, integrating, acquisition driven instru instruction in my classroom since I want to say around 2016 was when I first started using it and uh, I slowly started integrating it into the upper levels and um, as far as my situation right now with a remote uh, teaching um, this is my fourth week we are in week four uh, I will tell you this uh, we have created this resource and I'm very very glad to be uh, here tonight to share all of the wonderful activities that um, we have decided to use uh, to enhance our students' learning. But what I wanna say to you tonight, and you'll, you'll continue to hear this throughout the presentation, these are just ideas, uh, some of the ideas that work for us. And you can feel free to pick and choose and adapt to meet your needs. So don't feel that what we're going to tell you tonight is the way, the way to go um, because we, Actually, you're going to see that we tweaked from how we created this at the beginning, this portfolio, we decided to tweak a couple of things with the changes that uh, were coming towards us as the weeks went by in our school. So something else that I want you to know right now is that uh, last week, my administration announced that the students were no, were no longer going to have to do assignments if they had an average 
that they were satisfied with. So even though we don't like to think that our students are driven by grades, and a lot of our students are not driven by grades, but the reality is that most students are driven by grades. Um, you know, that was kind of sad news for me, but I want to say that a lot of these activities my students are still doing just for the fun of it and because they find enjoyment in learning the language through these activities. So we hope you're um, able to connect with the activities tonight and we'll be super happy to answer questions as we go through this and we share with you. And I want to introduce to you my friend Claudia Elliott. She's actually the person that had the idea about the portfolio. And I said to her, she asked me to help her, you know, put it together. And I said, of course, of course, because right now it is so important that we are not, we don't become an island and that, you know, we all stick together and that we work uh, through this because the way we're stronger, it's going to be together. So what probably could have taken Claudia a lot longer took us two days to put together. Uh -huh. So um, I'm really glad that she asked me to collaborate with her. And um, I'm going to introduce you to my amazing friend, Claudia Elliott. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much, eh, Annabelle. I'm just so excited when Berta told me that eh, you asked her to come and she's asking me to come. I was like, oh, my gosh, this is like going to see Shakira uh, in, the, in, the, in the backstage. Like, oh, my gosh, I feel so honored because I admire you so much. I mean, you cannot imagine how many things I have adapted from you so it's just so great to to be here it's just an honor you have really inspired me i teach high school and i teach all the levels in high school i teach a uh, level one and then i teach level three ib and i teach ap and then when I'm, my administrators come they cannot believe that we do chocolate that we do pikachu and they would say they would never do it they're high schoolers and say they love it they love it. I mean, like, who wouldn't? So I am, um, uh, I don't know, like, I have really been inspired by you and by so many teachers. And um, I am from Colombia, and I've been teaching for 14 years here in the United States. And if you're self-conscious about your Spanish, Annabel, I'm super self-conscious about my English. So I hear you, like, that is intimidating. And I think that's good to be because I think that makes it vulnerable and related to our students. We know how it feels. We know that it's intimidating. So uh, I teach um, in Jacksonville, Florida, and uh, I have taught virtual school. I have taught inner city school, and now I'm teaching in a magnet school, uh, which is IB and AP. Um, and then um, when we were talking to Berta, um, about this, I came from Colombia one day and they said, uh, and I was in March when everything this was happening. And then they told me that I couldn't go back to the classroom. We were in spring break. And that was like, I think uh, a Monday. And then on Wednesday, they told us we have a meeting tomorrow. And that was a Thursday. And then on that meeting, they told us, okay, we're gonna go remote learning. We're not going to go back to school on Monday. So we had two days and I called Berta because I know Berta teaches uh, AP and I say, what are we gonna do? And I say, I have this idea, uh, let's work together so we can make it happen because I only have two days, I have three preps, I have 170 students uh, and I want to provide opportunities for them. And I believe uh, in my upper level classes, I still have to give choice and I have to meet my students where they are uh, and of course, you know, you would say, oh, AP, they're gonna be advanced low, intermediate high. No, <laughs> no, that's not the reality. And uh, in the last year, the last two years, I have been very conscious to open my upper level classes to everybody that is willing. So if they want to come and work with me, I will meet them at their level and help them grow up in their proficiency. So that is the ideal portfolio because you have so many options and so many ways for them to um, tell you what they know and what they can do with the language that provide that choice and flexibility was key. So that's what we're talking about here today, just choices for upper levels that they can do, that they can meet, that they feel really uh, inspired because as Berta says, all our situations are different. Some districts are requiring grades, some districts are not. So the flexibility that this um, a digital portfolio give us as a teachers 
is is super valuable. So that's kind of like the story. All right, and I think we are ready to share your screen, Annabelle. It's on there. Oh, it's in there? Great. You're set. Okay, awesome. All right, so as you can see, we created this uh, AP Spanish portfolio, and you're going to have this file so that you can reference to it on your own at your own time. We're going to kind of go over it tonight, and hopefully you'll be able to take a couple of ideas from here. There's something for everybody. So just because we're focusing on AP, you can easily tweak all of these into a lower level scenario. And I'll even show you some examples tonight. Uh, so uh, why did we create a digital portfolio? Um, well, like Claudia said, it provides choice to the students. And that is very important because like uh, Claudia just mentioned, uh, the students that we have, I don't know about your reality, but my reality is just like Claudia's. I have students, uh, I have some students that I hand select to be an AP and I have some students that choose to be an AP and and maybe they're not in the intermediate high level quite yet, but I'm not gonna turn them away. And um, then there are some students, to be honest, that are placed in there because they don't have somewhere else to go. And I know that it's not ideal, but that's just the reality in my school. Uh, also, we decided to create this digital portfolio because it, we created it with uh, targeting all the modes of communication required for the upper um, level learners. And all the modes of communication are gonna be integrated into the AP exam. Even with the current changes that were announced recently, students are gonna have to be great at listening and they're gonna have to be great at processing um, interpretive reading when they're looking at the scheme of the conversation. They're still gonna have to be good at that. So we try to create activities for all communication modes. It also allows the students to be independent. And that is something that is so important today because my students, I have some students, especially my seniors and my juniors, prior to this happening, they were working at places like Kroger and Publix. And um, now they're working even more hours because maybe mom lost their job at their home. So they have to step up the hours. And uh, so this portfolio gives them the flexibility to work in what they need to work or on what they want to work and also to work at their own pace. And it just becomes uh, their portfolio. So they it creates ownership on the students. And again, it's just a flexible tool. Claudia. Uh, one of the things that we talk about is how to use this. Uh, and I think is to use it based on your needs. Uh, I think you can, uh, depending on your, um, situation uh, you can just give it to the student and is meant to be like that like you can give it to the student share it with the student and we created rubrics that goes with most of the activities that the student can click read and then submit uh, so you can be you know you can say i need you to do two assignments i need you to do one from the uh, reading and the writing you can do one from the speaking and the culture you can do three, you can do four, you can do one. It just depends. It depends on your own reality, which is really flexible for, for us. Uh, also, you can uh, keep the, port I'm using this portfolio for my AP class, but I'm using this portfolio for my level three IB class because the resources are fantastic. Uh, so all the, the authentic resources that we have collected here allows me to really fast go and find resources that I can use. Also, if you, uh, there is a lot of clicks and all those are links that you can copy and use for your own classes. But one of the things that we really wanted to do is to try to uh, decrease the uh, temptation of cheating. <laughs> so it was really important for us to make them, our students know that we want to see what they can produce. We weren't going to be there. Like I usually present my authentic resources with an oral tell uh, to make it more comprehensible. So I always bring, if I'm gonna talk about an article, I just kind of like skim my article and I identify the vocab that is gonna be difficult for them. And I bring visuals and I do an oral tell. 
And then after the oral tell, we do some kind of like write and discuss, and then we give the article. Why? Because my students are not ready to read at that level yet. And that's okay. So I give them all this scaffolding, but now I'm not with her. Um, I cannot do oral tell about every single thing, but what I can do is I can provide really compelling, authentic resources with a lot of visuals and provide a tool where they can complete to tell me, okay, what you're understanding. And that tool matches the uh, AP curriculum. So for example, if you look in the reading, I'm looking like, can you identify the main idea? Can you identify at least three details? Can you identify the purpose of this? Can you identify the audience? Can you give me a brief summary? So instead of the multiple choice that they're gonna be the resource that they're gonna find in the digital, book that they're gonna of course they're gonna have a 50 percent and what they're gonna do they don't want to see a 50 percent they are gonna go and use online translators so we really wanted to provide them with choices where they can really shine and give them options to feel proud of what they have done during this year even though it was short uh, so that is how you can apply it. So if for my level three, I'm using a lot of the resources and a lot of the forms because it works with upper levels, with any upper level. So how you decide to use this is entirely up to you. You can use pieces, you can use the entire portfolio, you can keep it, you can go because the work has been done and it's like a collection of incredible, appealing, uh, resources that can be used uh, and they're like organized by themes which make it even better okay all right so this is a page that we created uh and this is where the portfolio really starts so it's a page and we have it in english so let me go browse through the english here's the english part because i know that maybe there are some french teachers um uh, joining us tonight so i want to make sure it's comprehensible to everybody so this is the page that we created for our students. And initially we had assigned our students to do four assignments, so one per one per communication mode per week. But now that things have changed, now we have two assignments and we are limiting those assignments to uh, be uh, speaking, a lot of speaking assignments and a lot of cultural assignments because that's what the AP test is going to target. Uh, and then for extra credit, they can do an assignment from the other communication modes. Uh, so this is what it looks like for the student. Um, we tell them, welcome to the plan, to read all the activities and familiarize themselves with the options. You can even create a video using Screencastify or Loom, which is, I love Loom, uh, and tell the students all the expectations of this, uh, of this portfolio. And then the students will pick two assignments from the speaking and the cultural and and then they're going to turn it in through a file so the students will have access to one file and if you click on this link right here i'm going to go ahead and click on it and it creates a copy for the student already we have it so that it already creates a copy for the student and the the page looks like this uh, It looks like this. So it will ask you which week it is, the last name of the student, the first name, what type of activity they did for each of the categories. And then if they have to turn in any files, they will at upload the files to this um, section. And, and that will be it. So instead of having 20,000 emails going into your inbox from all your AP students, each with a separate assignment, you will have, they can drop off the files in just one Google form. So we kind of simplify that. Then the other yeah, thing. I think that's a great idea. And okay. I think that's a great idea for any type. Like at this, I think we are like the, I don't know, my internet is not doing really well right now. But I just wanted to say that creating a form like that would be a great idea nowadays because I think our emails are so full that it is so important to be able to have one channel where our students can send everything in one channel to avoid because I, I don't know you but i have received like at the beginning they were sending me emails but sometimes i didn't see the emails so i didn't put the grade and then the student was so frustrated because 
they like, oh, why well, you didn't put my cry? Like, I didn't receive your work. Oh, I sent it to your email. And then it just, it just gets really, really crazy. So creating this form was really a, a great idea to help us channel everything for submissions purposes. So basically, you will turn, uh, you will share this file with your students, and you can customize it and put your office hours, your email, your Google Voice number if you're using one at the moment, and then you know. Th my students can also send me messages on my teacher social media account. That's totally okay. And sometimes they send me um, their Instagram videos and their TikTok videos that way. And that is okay with me. That might not be your preference, but you can also put that in here. And then something else that you might notice on this slide is that Claudia and I are hosting Zoom meetings with our students once a week to just gather and talk in Spanish uh, about, we have different topics each week that we have to talk about AP topics. And, you know, we make it really engaging and, and involve the students in the conversations. So you, if you are doing a Zoom meeting with your students, uh, you know, we suggest that you add, tell them what time the meetings are uh, so that they can come and check in with you as far as if you decide to implement all of the portfolio or just a little part of the portfolio. I'm gonna jump in too and say, mm -hmm. I think that this is a really, it can be a really hard thing because our schedules are like insane right now and with ch children and are helping them with their own schoolwork, et cetera, et cetera. But if you can do what they've done and have a consistent day and time, um, it's certainly helpful for the students to be able to plan. Um, I've seen more attendance in my Zoom meetings since I stuck with a specific time and a specific day because it's something that they can pre-plan for and families too because a lot of times these kids, Bertha mentioned like them having jobs and stuff. Most of our students are not single children in single children households either. So they have siblings who are all sharing possibly one device and it might not even be there. And our younger students, it might not even be theirs. It might be a parent's device. So if you can set a time and stick to it, as hard as that is, it it you might see better attendance. Absolutely. I, uh, I totally agree. I agree. Yeah, me too. And one thing that it has really worked for me for attendance, like today, I had 95% attendance. <laughs> and is I know, and is like I'm really being intentional on making my live session super interactive. And uh, today, for example, I invited a mystery person. And the mystery person had like a mystery, like, you know, like she put like an, a, an, a question mark. And then the class in my AP class was asking questions. So again, asking questions is a, what an important uh, skill for them. And they were asking questions to try to figure out who that person was. And they wanted like, oh, it's your mom. No, it's not your mom. Oh, it's your best friend. Oh, no. Oh, it's a teacher. Oh, no. And I had pictures of all people like related to me and they were guessing. And I, and I advertised, you know, like, like you would do with a, you know, any event that you're doing. I advertised it and I started sending reminders like, are you ready to meet my mystery person? Are you? And, and they came and they all came. So I think uh, they are going to come, like Annabelle said, if you are consistent with time and day, like mine's are always the first day of the week. And I have a time scheduled for each one of my classes. And also the uh, interactive part, uh, more than a lecture, it is really appealing for them. Yeah, that's a great idea, Claudia. She she told me she was going to do it, but she didn't tell me about how it went. But I'm I was certain that it was going to go great. Okay, so this is what our portfolio looks like, and this is the slide that the students will get. We have it again in the file. It's available to you in English and in Spanish. Um, and basically, like I said, it has the four communication modes. We have a uh, reading, listening, speaking, writing, and culture and communities. And actually, B and D have a lot of speaking into it. So um, the first thing that we are asking the students to do, and like Claudia mentioned and I mentioned earlier, is that we want to be able to reach all students regardless of their current proficiency. So 
we provided several types and several levels of activities. So first we're sending our students to Lingua and I kind of wanted to ask if people were familiar with lingua.com in here. So if you could just type in the chat box if you have used it or not. Um, and if you haven't, well, I'm gonna show you what Lingua looks like. And it's not only for Spanish teachers, it's also for German teachers, Italian teachers, French teachers. So it took me straight to the Spanish website, but you can set it up to any language. And it has readings for lower levels and not such higher levels, but if you have students in your AP class who are more intermediate lows, then this is gonna be very beneficial, beneficial, very comprehensible to them. So the students can create an account and if you know the word or the phrase create an account creates an eye roll in you just like it doesn't mean nowadays you don't have to create an account but if you want to you absolutely can and it will save your progress and it is completely free so you click on any reading and it has questions and you can answer the questions and it will give you a report and if the student let's say the student doesn't have access if you have to provide something that the student for the students who don't have access you can always print this off print the reading and the questions and make sure that you sharpie uh, use a sharpie to darken this because obviously it gives you the answers and we don't want to give the answers but that is also an option for our students so this was the first option to go to lingua and then uh, claudia is going to tell you about the next couple of options uh, I know everybody was saying that that looks amazing. I, I, isn't that amazing? I love the website because it really provides for a place for our upper level students to feel successful. And I think that's such an important part of, because sometimes I think the expectations in, in terms of the readings that you find in um, all the upper levels uh, textbooks are like so above their comprehension level. So this is incredible and is and it's free. Uh, no, it's uh, it's free forever, right, Berta? It's not. Yes, it's not. well, it's it has always been free, even yes. before coronavirus. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. It has been free forever, and it really. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, it, that's gonna stay free forever. So that's a great place. Now, if you ha you can have the students to do the multiple choice, but for upper levels, I really want them to be thinking about audience. And this was before they change, but I think it has a value for the future or for your other classes. I really want them to be, uh, I mean, we were talking to Berta and like, okay, multiple choice is good, but multiple choice really is telling you what they understood. Uh, I don't know. So the form that we created to assess that was a form that was focused on the skills that we want our upper levels to really work on, which is what is the purpose? What is the audience? What is the main idea? So uh, that uh, that um, um, uh, form has even the skills, the standards that AP uses uh, for for that. So yes. the the next one was poetry because I I mean I know poetry is not the favorite one for students, but I think poetry is such an important part of our language. So this poetry side has poems, really short poems by theme. And that's what I really, whoops. I don't know what happened to the web page. <laughs> it is, it, I tried it um, um, before we came here. Yeah, I have no idea what happened to it, but we'll, we'll, we'll fix it and check into it. But that one has themes and, and that is so um, important for the AP theme and IB and the uh, kids can choose family they have a um, uh, environment they have a uh, poverty they have um, christmas so they can search by theme and they're really short but it allows the students to do a you know different type of reading uh where they can choose whatever they're interested in can i ask a really quick question about lingua so if students yes. If students don't have to create an account and can read those stories, how are they um, providing you, are, are they taking a photo and submitting it to the Google form? Yes, okay. yes they can create a, they can take a, a photo to submit it on the Google form. 
and they also if you want to this is optional like i said everything we're telling you is optional if you don't like one resource you don't have to use it but you we created this uh, form um right here and it's another google form that if you want to say okay you're going to do lingua and, and i want you to do more than just send me the uh, screenshot because that's not enough um you can have them submit this they have to identify the text uh, match it to the right ap theme and then tell you what the main idea is by supporting details the purpose of the text the audience of the text and you know they can do that in spanish or in english depending on their level that's incredible mm -hmm. okay cool and it creates the form just like it created a new copy for me when i click it will do the same for a student Okay, and the next um, the, the next uh, activity that we selected for the students that they can do, and I'm gonna let Claudia talk to, to you guys about this because she was the one who told me about this amazing website uh, for Span. Sorry, this is only for Spanish teachers. And I, I know, am I'm so sorry. sorry. I am friend. so sorry. I am so sorry. But she is from Colombia, and you know, I don't know. I have this 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 love for Colombian teachers. <laughs> But Monica Lopez is incredible, and uh, her website is called Espanoliando, and it has the most incredible units uh, in uh, for free. So I talked to her and I said, "We're in this situation, Monica. Can I use your resources?" And she's like, "Oh my gosh, I would love for everybody to use my resources. Go ahead." So what I did is I went to her website, which is incredible, and you need to check it out if you're teaching Spanish because she has so many incredible resources. Uh, and she has, a, I, I, I chose some uh, related to each one of the themes. And uh, they are so in depth. She works with, uh, you know, she breaks it down so well for the students. Uh, and it has reading, it has activity, it has questions, uh, sometimes it has videos. So it is really robust, the a type of activity that she has. And she has made all these authentic resources with extra help, with extra visuals, with glossaries that really help them to be comprehensible. So I thought this was something that it should, I mean, like it, it's gonna be valuable for you regardless of you know if you're going to do remote learning or go back to your school uh, and sh i pick the ones for upper levels but she has all these resources even for lower levels using authentic resources for all the levels yes so this is our web page and you can go browse and look at it because like claudia said um there's something for everybody on her page yeah so it, it is just amazing. I was completely blown away when Claudia shared this uh, website with me. And I'm so glad that, you know, we decided to integrate it. So the other um, option for reading, for interpretive reading, is to have the students read an article in another site. Now, Lingua was the easiest one of all. But we also provided articles that are uh, categorized by le lexile levels in Spanish and common lit and also you can use news la is another option if you have an account there and right now they're doing free accounts in both places um and you can select the articles for the students they have act articles in spanish and they have them uh like i said categorized by lexiles these are amazing articles for heritage speakers for all learners but you find stuff that is really interesting for heritage speakers in a uh, common lit and if you create the account it's really easy to set up the the uh, class so that the students can go ahead and turn it in directly uh via the common lit web page and then that way you can just grade it from there can i add something better yes. because i use it you know i mm -hmm. this is is unbelievable i mean it's, if something the amount of information that we have gained and all the knowledge that we have acquired during these days we're in learning mode this common lead has the possibility uh, so it has the text but it uh, tied to the text it has authentic resources that you can use and i love the videos like i am doing social media with my ib3 class and i selected um a a text but with the text it has some videos and the videos were super comprehensible and it just really was a great first step before they read the text 
So I uh, thought that this was incredible. Can you see how when you click on the on a, on a text, it has some additional um, materials? Yes. If you click on the text, sometimes it gives you other other materials. So it has guiding questions for the students, but it, you go over here where it says related media, and it will give you a video that goes along with Look it. Look at that. Or Look at that sometimes sometimes an infographic you just kind of had to explore it and like i said they have topics for all interests so the student can go in here and really just find something that is compelling to them and you know that will increase the motivation oh i don't just have to go do this for spanish and i have i have no choice here and they actually if they're into history they can read about history if they are mexican and they want to read about benito de juarez benito juarez they can go do that or if they are into um selfies like this one for example i actually use this in my class before COVID. uh and then they have related media and see they have a beautiful infographic, infographic. yes it is so, it is beautiful i mean it's a really it is it's a really great way to scaffold because you can use this related media before and then the article and it just really makes sense and this one is not free forever this one's only free for now but uh, that's so, so uh, that's the bad news about it but you can absolutely take uh opportunity to explore it and maybe see you can present it better to your admins next year now that you have used it and uh, maybe you know hopefully they'll they'll support you in uh, in, in that sense and provide that um that account for you and your students is that then, like just spanish as well or is, does that have french do you know no, no that one only french. has spanish okay. yes okay. um so finally at the last sessions and we'll go ahead and tell you at the end of each one of these uh we gave the students the option that uh to go to ap classroom or vista central or maybe you're using vista central if you're using the book temas I don't use a, a textbook, even though I do have themas. I just don't use it. Um, but uh, or if you're using another textbook, you can link it over here because some students do like uh, the structure of, of, of the text. So that's always an option. Personally, I don't really like AP Classroom, but <laughs> but it's there because you know the students are expected to know how to use it. Um, for the listening and the speaking activities. Uh, we are going to be talking about this more in depth in another separate slide. And then we're going to be talking about BBC Mundo in a separate slide as well. Right, Claudia? Yes. 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 Okay. And then we're going to be mm -hmm. talking about this one on a separate slide because we want to really go in depth for those activities for you. Uh, we already spoke about the Zoom conference. So remember how we said we established one day, one day of the week to meet with the students? Well, their activity for listening and speaking that they might be to join you, you know, they're already going to be there, but, you know, to join you and engage in even more conversation that week on a specific topic for the listening or speaking aspect of it. And then finally, for listening and speaking, again, visit AP Classroom and complete a listening or speaking activity or go to your uh, Vista Central um, page if you have one of those. Um, in the next section, uh, Claudia, you talk about the grammar review for uh, this one. Okay, so um, I don't, I, I, I think uh, I don't use a lot of grammar in my classroom, um, even in my upper levels, it's just really a minor, but I have a lot of students who really enjoy it. So I thought that it was a good choice. You know, they can do some grammar practice for the upper level structures. So I gave them these two choices. I, uh, the first one uh, is a uh, Colby. Uh, and uh, I really like how they do it, the grammar, because it's really also uh, always integrated with some type of a cultural aspect and they have songs and they have a lot of culture there so uh, that's a good choice for me so they i gave them this choice and you know in the past because i have used this portfolio some some version of that and in the past i have you know when they have to submit it like every two weeks at least once per month they like to do some grammar uh, uh, activity so I gave them these two choices for them to do grammar if they chose to do that. And I'm doing that for my level three IB 
uh, now and and they enjoy it and you know it, 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 it's it's okay i mean if they want to do it for me it's, it's fine but also uh, when we're talking about writing and, and we think writing is is those of those are skills that are really difficult to do uh, by themselves but i think when you enjoy it and you start doing it more often not for a grade but just for the enjoyment i think the students really get engaged so what our idea with Berta was just to try to provide choice for them to show us and really uh, in the rubrics really see what they're trying to do instead of being a punitive uh, rubric we wanted to see the growth of in, in them like really wanted to bring them up that level that we want and that's why we just gave them different choices in terms of a poem or a history find something that you want to tell us just tell me something right whatever it was it was just more like a type of a free write type of activity with different topics and that's what we did in the writing part always thinking uh, about giving them that that freedom and and a way for them to show us what they have absolutely so um like claudia said in this specific area we just wanted to make sure we met the needs of most of our students um some students they want to they very few students but i do have maybe less than a handful that will ask me for that grammar practice because they wanna that, that that helps them learn so if that's what they want i have options to provide for them as well um we also wanted to integrate um having them write a poem or a short story without the pressure um of like a topic an ap topic per se just writing for pleasure so we could see their flow or the flow of their writing and um and and those were the activities we created for writing but for uh, the culture and the communities we'll be talking about uh, this one more in depth uh select one of the videos from the products practices and perspectives link and we're going to be talking about this more in depth in a minute and we also ask the students to conduct a search online about a topic of their interest in spanish-speaking countries and create a two-minute video um well in this one or, or a voice recording and then they could link it to the weekly form and we're going to be talking about hablame like i said this, this is the same option as in b3 it's on d1 it's kind of similar but not really and we're going to be talking about those in just a second and then claudia uh could you please tell us about uh the uh, cultural clips in flipgrid yes okay so the, i love flipgrid i think flipgrid is such a great tool for them uh, but I wanted, you know, again, I, I know my students and my students need a lot of support. Uh, I just cannot send my students to say, go and record a cultural comparison because they're going to feel lost and they're going to end up going to an online translator. So for me, it has been always very important to model. When I'm in the class, I'm always modeling for them. But when I'm in remote, I can so what I did is I created uh, some pictures that I took in my trip to Colombia, and I record using Loom a uh, cultural comparison of different aspects. So like, for example, in this one, I have the question, which is a question from AP. Oh, cultural yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Well, cultural comparison i took the the, the 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 picture and i just record i record what i see you know like i was really modeling what i want to hear them saying and i i really pay attention not to make it too complicated because it really doesn't have to be that complicated and sometimes they feel like you want to hear them using i don't know what type of tense and then they go far and they don't understand anything that they're saying so I want them to be comprehensible. So I took the time and I draw and I told them about how social media uh, is the attitude of young people uh, in relation with social media. And I created this and then I download this video in Flipgrid and that's my sample. And then I ask them the question and then they record themselves responding to my prompt. Again, it's not like sending them there to say, go do a cultural comparison. Exactly. and and that was kind of my fear for all my classes is like i cannot just go and give them stuff 
because I was always teaching to their eyes. So when I'm teaching to their eyes, I know. I know when I have to stop. I know when I have to make it more clear. I know I know when I have to drop it, like this is not working. <laughs> Let me go. But now it, it was something that we talked to Berta, how important it is to make to to let them know that we've been thoughtful when we give assignments, that I'm not giving you something because just to keep you busy. I want you to know that I am doing this so you understand, so you can do it and you feel like you can do it. So those are some clips that we, we put there and that's what I'm doing with my classes for Flipgrid for I cultural comparison. I think it's so, 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 sorry to interrupt you, but it's so important that you mentioned really specifically modeling because so many times I've gone into upper level classes and there's this assumption that because they're upper level that they don't need the same kind of modeling that you do at a level one or two. And they need the exact same amount of modeling in order to progress in the way that they have from one to two, now to three, four, yeah. eight, eight. They need the exact same modeling regardless of what it is. So that's, that's probably why you're seeing success in your students is because you've given them that if, even if it's just a safety net or the confidence of, oh, okay, if there's any doubt in their mind, now that you've modeled it, they know exactly what they were planning to do was correct. And now I can, I have the confidence to be able to do it. It's so important, even in upper levels to model. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, I, I totally agree. And you will be able to see if you click in here. That will be uh, es, exactly what Claudia eh, said. Estoy aquí desde Cartagena. No mentiras, desde mi casa. Eh, y quería hablar de esta foto y hablar un poco de la tecnología en la vida. So she goes on to talk about technology and like she said, to describe, but uh, that is something that uh, Claudia created for her students with some of her pictures from Colombia. And you know, this is, I thought it was a marvelous idea. So I'm thinking I'm gonna be creating something like this for my students in the future as well, just to get them talking, um, even for my lower levels, uh, just to make it compelling and comprehensible to them and then see what they can uh, provide for me and they can produce for me uh, in their lower levels. So like I mentioned earlier, totally adaptable ideas. So now we're gonna go in a little bit more depth on specific activities. Here's the Spanish version that we promise. And then here's uh, one that I said, I'm gonna go in there, but I'm gonna, we skipped it earlier. So this one said it was B1 and it was created a two minute video on Instagram or TikTok and talk to me about something that has surprised you or something that you like the most about the Spanish speaking world. Tag me in your story or download the video. So. I'm pretty big in using social media with my students. Um, I have a, 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 I just started using uh, TikTok with my students because that's what they like to use. And uh, I, I even made some videos with them before school got out and I really miss them. They were so cute. About that. <laughs> so, and I also use Instagram. Now my Instagram is to, so is to really share ideas with teachers. But also it's it's a place where I highlight my students and they love to be on my Instagram. So uh, it, it so happened that after we were out of school, instead of I was getting emails from my students, but I was also getting as many Instagram messages from my students asking me questions about assignments and things of that nature. And that's OK with me P personally. That's OK with me. You might have a different preference, um, but I just want to share that social media is the language they speak. So um, I use Instagram and I'm gonna share with you how they submit it. So this one is from uh, my student and she had to, uh, she, she had she does not like to tag herself. She's very shy. And I told her I was gonna be sharing this with you guys tonight. And I said, but don't worry, it's a closed group. Nobody, no students are gonna be there. And, <laughs> and you know, she, she was okay with me sharing it. So you can see how she sent me her video on Instagram, her submission. And that was okay with me. So that's up to you as a teacher if you are going to allow them to share submissions on Instagram or not. And then, you know, she, even before I gave her any feedback, she said, oh, I made a lot of mistakes. And it was this conversation. So, you know, this was her conversation. Uh, and it, it was to her talking about um, Hispanic families. I'm just gonna share a little snippet of it, if it plays. Um, 
tiene los abuelos, los padres y los hijos. Um, muchas familias viven extendida en una casa. Um, tres generaciones. Um, también, ¿cuáles son algunos aspectos importantes de valores? Um, familias en países hispanohablantes um, valoran, valoran, valoran um, I love her. I'm familias, sorry, I love her. Ellos valoran um, <laughs> religión. Muchas van a um, iglesia todos los fines de semana. Um, sorry. Okay, so and then this is another video. I'm not gonna play it, but this is another video of another student of mine. She's on a um, level level three, and she created a video for me. And I don't know if you can tell, but this is actually a video on TikTok, and that's how she submitted it. So the students will respond to this ones because they're already there half of the time anyway. So it's easier for them to not go to another platform. Um, and I do love Flipgrid. Nothing against Flipgrid, but I found too many um, uploading issues with Flipgrid. So I like to use uh, my favorite choice of preference for uploading videos or just for students uh, turning in videos is Seesaw. But, you know, I'm not going to talk about Seesaw tonight. <laughs> um, Claudia will talk to you guys about this option on BBC Mundo. So, um I don't know, the, 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 my internet is, is, is kind of working. So BBC Mundo is really difficult to understand. So um, I want them to go and find some current news from BBC Mundo. And I want them to listen to BBC Mundo several times because I think it's, it's a good practice for them to be able to understand something. And then I want them to give me a summary in Flipgrid. But every time that I create something in Flipgrid or any anything like I create for my students in terms of activity, I'm always thinking in giving them support. Like I feel like Annabelle just said, the, the fact that they're an AP doesn't mean that they're independent or that they can create with the language. Sometimes they are, and, and if they are, great, they're not going to even need my tool. But for me, it is really important that I provide some structures to help them start some sentence started, some some uh, cohesive devices, some transitional words, some vocab, where they're gonna feel empowered and always reduce the possibility or the, the stress for them to uh, go and uh, start using online translators. So Bebes Mundo, mm -hmm. it has uh, so much content and so much important information for them. And I want them to go and I want them to be exposed to that because in the AP exam, they're going to have, and in the IB exam, because I do IB and AP, they're going to have to be facing those authentic uh, uh, audios that are going to sound like, you know, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so I want them to go and listen and I want them to give me a summary, but I'm not going to tell them to give me a summary unless I'm giving them these structures. So these are some structures that I share with my students in my upper levels all the time. I want them to prompt them. I want them to help them think what I'm looking for. It's kind of my way to just kind of like grab your hands and start the sentence. And this is something that I do in my class. And I was talking to Berta the other day. And in my class, I have them on my walls. But now my reality yeah. is so different. But I still need to provide that. So I am just... Every time that I post an assignment for my students, I post some, some vocab, some structures, some expressions that are going to help them uh, express themselves in Spanish instead of going to an online translator. Absolutely. If we give them the support they need, they will produce at their own level what they will produce and they won't be intimidated by the task and they will avoid going to uh, uh, Google Translate because it will be more difficult to go to Google Translate than to actually complete the task. This is another resource that I want to share with you guys. I forgot, I don't know who shared it, but it was a teacher who shared it on one of the AP uh, pages for teachers. Have you guys heard about Hablame? And actually, Heidi, I know you're uh, still with us. They have it in French. 
and it is amazing. It is an amazing resource. Now, here's the only downfall. It does not work on a cell phone. It only works on a desktop or on a laptop. So um, if you go to the page, Hablame, is it provides interpersonal speaking and also presentational speaking. And basically what it does, it takes the student through the whole simulated conversation experience. So they will click on this on this little box and then a random simulated conversation will come to them and it will record it for them as they go. And at the end, it will provide a file, an MP4 file that they can upload to Google Classroom or email it to you or whatever, uh, or maybe upload it as an unlisted video on YouTube and share with you the, the link that's only available to you. I have done students, I have had students do that who can't upload uh, certain files. And, and then that way you can look at it and you can grade it. And, and again, we have uh, Claudia's beautiful creation, how she put together all the necessary uh, vocabulary to enhance this interpersonal speaking um, assignments. Uh, and and yes, it's it's an amazing website. And I'm actually going to go. I can I can show you the entire. Um, I cannot show you the entire. Uh, walk you through the entire activity because we really don't have much time. Uh oh. Where did it go? Oh, here we go. So you go over here to interpersonal speaking, and then you can give them a code. You can actually give them a code um, to tell them which prompt to do. And I'll show you where to find those codes. And you will just go to start. And then the moment the activity starts, it starts recording. You will now begin this task. Ahora vas a empezar este ejercicio. And then you for have my one French teachers, to read the preview. you just click on the bottom, and voila, you have a French uh, site as well as possible. And the next activity we're going to share with you before we wrap up is the D1. It was about doing just going to uh, browse through a video or go to watch a movie. Some of these videos are longer than others. Some of them are about five minutes long. And we have all types of videos. We have compiled a list for you so you don't have to go look for anything. This is only for Spanish. Um, again, apologies. <laughs> and um, and yes, the students can select what they're going to go explore. <laughs> and then they have to uh, complete this a little activity. As we know, in the cultural comparison, the College Board wants them to highlight products, practices, and perspectives in the cultural comparison. And that's kind of hard sometimes for the students to think. So we kind of isolated this task and we have the students go and select one video to watch and then complete the form where they tell us what is one product that you know they were able to uh, capture a practice and a perspective and just kind of include that in here. Uh, and Claudia wants to talk about uh, 68 Voices, which is an amazing resource. So I'm going to let Claudia talk about that one. I, I think I, I was talking to uh, Berta, and I think the, what, one of the things that I love about AP Culture is, I mean, of course, I want to really support my students with proficiency. But more than that, I want all my students to feel that uh, pride in the language. I, I want them to feel like, to gain that love for the culture and the language that I have. And it really works for my heritage speakers uh, when we're talking about language. And this is an amazing, amazing uh, website and it's called 68 Voces. And it's all the 68 languages, the 68 languages, uh, the native languages that are dying in Mexico and they are telling um, legends and myth in the language with subtitles in Spanish. And I thought that that, that was such an incredible. incredible. Like, I, I think I will play it just little, made me I, almost cry. Like I will, I will those play are like, the things like, that I love to share with my students because it's a story, it's an incredible story. I know, right? I know, I wanted to cry. Like I really, I show it to my students and it is, it's just those moments, like you say, this is what I'm here. This is, this is what I, it's not about the language. It's about this, this love and respect for our roots. And, and it just kind of, and, and my heritage speakers, 
somehow start like lighting up, like shining, like, oh my God, yeah, that's my heritage too. And it's just this incredible passion that and, I ignite. So and I, just I don't wanna, know, this I is one wanna, of my favorite I, I sides. Play, I wanna play like 10 seconds of it because I got chills when I first opened one of these videos. Uh, and because it's so beautiful, it's 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 spoken in a, a language or in a dialect from um, that is you know very rarely spoken nowadays. And then it has the subtitles in Spanish, so the students can hear the dialect. And I have had students who speak different uh, dialects from Mexico, and you know to be able to bring something like this to them, it's truly a gift. So I will play the little. Well, I think now my internet is acting so. Que más polibus es la tolca manali. My my too. Okay, so I said 15 seconds cuz you know, Claudia and I when we um talk, we just can talk forever, guys. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so Finally, um, well, we already kind of wrapped it all up, but uh, again, we were talking about Hablame earlier and Hablame had the interpersonal, but it also has presentational. And then again, we have this beautiful uh, graphic organizer that tells the students what kind of conversation they can use. Um, and if you click on Claudia's picture right here, you have free access to that resource. Um, and you can use it with your students starting uh, tomorrow. Um, and it's it's amazing. <laughs> and uh, now, you know, we'll, we'll be super happy and super glad to take any questions from you guys. Um, it's been a pleasure to be here with you tonight. And uh, Annabelle, thank you so much for having us and inviting us. And um, I hope that, you know, you can pick, you if you decide to use the entire portfolio, wonderful. But if you decide that you only wanna use a couple of activities, that's fine too. And let me tell you what the beauty about this portfolio is as well, is that next year, if you have a sub day, you have somewhere where you can go pull an activity and quickly upload it to like Google Classroom or whatever it is that you use. Uh, and it's there ready for you to do yeah. and for your students to do. So you can totally um, ask us questions and you can connect with us. Um, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, you can email us. And, and yes, we would love to hear from you. If you have any questions right now for us about our presentation or um, just questions in general or anything we didn't cover. About what you've done in two days. Well, and, and all the work after, but in two days what you've created is something that it's it goes beyond like yes it's about choice and yes it's about meeting kids where they are but if you think about the amount of time that you've put in so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel every single day every single week is huge too because you don't you don't need to remake this every week kids can have this portfolio and still go okay new week what are my two activities this week new week what are my two activities this week with very little changes that you need to make um because of the of the time that you've invested in making this so high quality with so many options and so in depth that you yourself you don't have to labor over redoing something every single time. It's incredible. And everybody's agreeing, look. Yes. <laughs> Yay, thank you. I, I love it and I, I, I love all the resources. And, and you know, like sometimes it doesn't happen to you, like you find a great resource and then you never find it. So this is, was a great moment to put all those resources together, have them in one place, organize them, put them in, uh, you know, in what mode of communication I'm going to use them, and then have them there. I, I mean, it, it was just an incredible, and I couldn't have done it by myself, so I'm so glad that Berta decided to yes, say yes. <laughs> she always, you know, she, she has so much work. She's always willing to to work and make it better so i think this was a, a teamwork and and thank you so much Annabel, for having us here and i'm so appreciative of this group and uh, you know it was great 
So um, what what's going to happen now is, um, Bertha, you're sending me a slideshow or something, yes? Yes, I, I, sent, I sent it to you on La Maestra Loca account. Okay, perfect. Uh, and, and, and the slideshow is actually the link, but I can actually go to the, to, I don't want to open the live on my tab because then I'm, I'm you open it to my after maybe you can put the link there and then mm -hmm. I'll also put it on Patreon because that people are liking that that's an easy go-to place to find the resources later on. So mm -hmm. I'll upload it to Patreon, but um, truly like unbelievable um amount of ideas amount of resources that i've never heard of and i've heard of i feel like every time somebody's like oh have you heard of i'm like oh yeah yeah but seriously like six brand new ones today that i had never heard of before that are so incredible i'm already thinking like oh i gotta call jenny who presented in um in i can't remember november or something and say god do you know about all these things for your kids um, so we're also grateful. Let me see. Give me two years and I would still not be able to do what your ladies have done. I agree. I feel like the exact same thing. Like, whoa, holy guacamole. What they've put together is amazing. Um, Heidi says she's doing hyper. But like you said, even like, for example, the 68, 68 bosses, you can use that totally with your lower levels and just make it more comprehensible. And imagine that it would be like, boom, it would be so powerful to share with our novice learners. And and if you have, if you just happen to have a, a heritage student who speaks one of those dialects, that would be an amazing connector with that one particular student, because that is like, not likely to happen in a classroom today. Sadly, your favorite memory from school period ever. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine the yeah. the value and the connection and the relationship building? Just just saying, I see you, I see you, and I am honoring you. Like, oh, it makes me like goosey. I, I remember when I was in high school and me I didn't too. speak. Mm -hmm. I came here when I was in seventh grade and I didn't speak any English. And then in eighth grade, I had an amazing ELA teacher, and she I didn't speak English as much. And she made me read one of Sandra Cisneros pieces and she had a recording for it, but she made me read it in Spanish. And you have no idea how important I felt that day. So it is so important to find those connectors with our students mm -hmm. um, because it, it really does make a difference in their day and in their, their entire year even. Yeah, it's, it, it's again, when we think about, I always push teachers in whatever workshop I'm in to, um, take a second to reflect on who do they remember most in their school career. And 90% of people will remember somebody that was like, it, it, it's never in an individual lesson. It's more like a, a moment or a, a, a consistent vibe they got from one teacher that made them see, feel seen, heard, and loved, valued for who they are. And mm -hmm. then 10%, it's like the total opposite. They remember something visceral and really negative. And that's why they're the teacher that they are because they never want to be this person who really negatively impacted them. So to be, and and we as teachers have those moments, obviously, and it's important to reflect back on those. But I think that um, people who, like Paul and Paul, my husband's, his was his, um, his, it was like a counselor but also his football coach. And it's the reason he made it through high school was this man. And so for every individual, regardless of whether you are a teacher or not a teacher, you school is everything. And so you could be that one teacher that makes them see, feel seen, heard, and loved, valued, cared for in that space that they remember regardless of what profession they go into. You'll be somebody that they talk to, to their children about, who they talk to, to their families about, that they said, or they, they just reminisce and go, oh, I, I miss Miss Delgadillo's class. I miss Miss Elliott's class where that one time that this happened or where I just was happy every day or during virtual learning. I had a student, I had a student who told me, I wish I would have waited till next year to take your class because I got robbed of time with you. Oh, and I was like, tears. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll find a way to let you take it again. It's okay. Yes, yes. amazing student too. Just oh, so special. That's so special. <laughs> um, thank you both. I want to honor and value your time as well. Um, thank you all for joining us. Those of you who are here tonight. Thank you to those of you watching later who couldn't be here with us tonight. Um, thank you to both of you for putting this together and all of these resources. 
it's just unbelievable. And we're so great. I know everybody's so, so grateful. Um, and um, for right now, I hope everybody can go and, to bed and rest and be ready for tomorrow. If you're teaching, yay. If you're I not, know. yay. Um, but rest. And um, again, we're Claudia and Berta, we're both, we're all so grateful for the time that you spent in creating things and then the time that you spent tonight presenting it to us. We're really grateful. Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. You're amazing. Yeah, thank you. It was great. Thank you. Thank you. It was awesome. Thank you. Okay. Love you both. Have a good night. Everybody have a good night. Get rest. Thank uh, you. Well and stay positive. I love Bye. you all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.